What's going on everyone and welcome back. To, today we're going to go over uh, the color class. Last week we went over creating the application and the clear color. Now we're going to be working on the color class. The reason why we're doing it first is because a color class is a main class that is used by just about anything that renders. So it's a it's a pretty important class. Uh, it's going to get thrown in there first because there's going to be a lot of classes that need access to color. And the reason why we're doing a color class ourselves instead of a pre-built one is so that we can add custom functions, uh, do things like lerps, uh, move towards, burning, uh, a lot of, we're going to do a lot of pre-built functions inside of this color class. So we'll go ahead and s start by creating a new color script. Do, do, do. Call it, no, not color, color. go and now we just create the variables like uh, RGBA red green blue alpha so do public float R equals one public public cheese oh, public float G equals one I'll just set everything to equal one. So it'd be a nice flat white. So then we need to create the constructor. Do public color float R float G float B float A. And then we're going to set these values to whatever we pass in. So we're going to do this dot, this dot r equals r, this dot g equals g, this dot b equals b, this dot a equals a. And then we can actually get rid of this alpha value for another one. That way that if we don't need to pass in an alpha value, then we don't have to. There we go. Uh, and that's basically it except for the default values. So say we want to get a color red or wine or forest or marine. We can call some static functions that will return a new color of that value. So do public static color. I'll do lowercase black. I'm just going to return new color. Uh, no, not one. Zero, 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 one. And close it off. And I can just copy this. Paste it, let's see. Do 11. One, two, oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That way we can have eleven different colors. Second, let's do white. Let's do one, one, one. Then we will do red. Right there. Blue. No. I'll do green first. Green. Blue. So then we have our RGBs that we can pull in. Now let's just do the standard gray. Which will be 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Now is wine, which wine is just a just a dark red. 0.5 F, and that will return wine. Then we can do forest, which is just a dark green. Do the same thing right here. Under forest, we can do marine. It's just a dark blue. And next, we can do yellow. Which is the picture of this. Cyan is one, one, and magenta, got a nice pink in there, which is one and one, and since we added a constructor that allows us to not pass in an alpha value. Wasn't paying attention when I did that or when I first started this. So now we have this alpha value we can get rid of. That way we're not passing more data than we have to. <clears throat> and now after all this we need an ability to turn it into a string. That way we can print the value. So do public string to string go return and string dot value of r and plus comma plus and we will just there we go copy that paste and paste get rid of that close it off I guess I can do the alpha value too. Yeah, I should have just done that. RGB missing that right there. Okay. And alpha. Oh. Forgot to close it off. There we go. 
All right, so that is our color class done for now. Later we will add lerp functions, burn functions, max functions, whatever, whatever we see fit. But something we can add for the moment is we can create a new math class. Call it math F. We can add a clamp function. And I've got kids yelling at each other. Awesome. Had to public float clamp. And I want In. Uh, here we go. Current value, the minimum that you want it at, maximum that you want it at. We will do if. value is lower than men return men if the value is greater than max return max or and if not we're going to return the value there we go this will clamp any float to a value that you want it to be in between. That way, if for some messed up reason we accidentally pass something gr like a greater value than what color should be, it will clamp it in between these values. So, you could do this.r equals mathf dot clamp not clamp uh, I didn't make that static did I no I didn't public static float put it in there now there you are all right we can go r zero is the minimum one is the maximum. We can just paste these values in here. And up to G. B. A. We are not doing the 255 colors. We are just doing a max value of one okay okay i'll be in there in just a minute okay buddy yeah you can go make you a sandwich okay right now sure <laughs> get so excited over sandwiches um actually we'll just get rid of all that and just replace it with that it's the same thing And there we go. So our minimum value is going to be zero. Our maximum value is going to be one. That way we can use uh, later in the math font or in the math class. We're going to add um, interpolation, linear interpolation, all kinds of all kinds of good stuff. So. We can use uh, interpolation values just between zero and one. That way we don't have to worry about whole numbers or anything like that. All right, and to test this out, I'm just gonna create a color right here. 
color clear equals um, color dot cyan. dot G clear dot B and that should set our clear color to cyan right there do magenta Yellow, right? Yes, there it is. All right, so we got the basic color class finished, the skeleton of it. And next week we will work on the mesh class and FBOs. We won't start rendering yet, but we will start out the skeleton for it because the mesh class will only have just a quad because since we're doing 2d but i will set it up so that sometime in the future if we want to render 3d objects in the scene it will already be skeletoned out that way so that way we'll already have it already all set up all right thanks for watching and i will see you next time